Today on The Hookup, we're going to talk about one of the most important things in the IT world, backups, and how to manage them automatically so you don't have to think about them ever again. Backups are not a sexy subject, but they're really important. Whether it's a hard drive crash, a flash memory failure, or just carelessly deleting or saving over important files, at some point we've all been burned by not having a recent backup. The best backup systems have three things in common. Number one, they happen often. Number two, they happen automatically. And number three, they are redundant. It's best to have a backup of your backups. Today, we're gonna set up some automations in Node-RED and Home Assistant that check all of those boxes. Let's first talk about backing up your backups. The most common way I've seen people back up their Home Assistant configuration is using GitHub. I am not a huge fan of this solution, and here's why. GitHub is public. Any files that you upload can be viewed by anyone on the internet. This is great for the main purpose of GitHub, which is a place to publish your open source code. But it's not great when you might have sensitive credentials in your files. Correct use of the secrets.yaml and git ignore files is absolutely crucial to ensuring that you don't publish your sensitive data for the rest of the world to see. You should know that there are nefarious bots combing GitHub constantly, searching for sensitive information that people accidentally upload. If it hits the GitHub servers even for a few seconds, you should assume that your sensitive data has been compromised. I also don't like that when backing up to GitHub, there's no local copy of my backup aside from the one that's actually on the Home Assistant drive. I'm fairly positive that GitHub isn't just gonna go randomly shut down their servers, but as a recurring theme on my channel, you may have noticed that if at all possible, I like to keep things local. Instead of GitHub, I would highly recommend that you store your backups on Dropbox. Not only does Dropbox give you a local copy of your files, but it also can't be accessed publicly by anyone on the internet. If you're already using Dropbox and you don't wanna waste your storage space on a Home Assistant backup, there's no reason that you can't sign up for a new Dropbox account and use the free two gigabytes to store your backups. While you're at it, you might as well use my Dropbox referral link in the description to create your new account so that I can get some of that sweet, sweet free storage. Let's walk through the process of creating a new Dropbox account and linking it to your Hass.io instance. The first thing you need to do is add Daniel Welch's add-on repository to your Hass.io add-on page. That link is in the description. Once you've done that, you'll now have the option to install the Hass.io Dropbox Sync add-on. Go ahead and click install, and then we'll head over to Dropbox to create our new account while it's working. Don't forget to use that referral link from the description. Enter your email address and choose a password to sign up. It will bring you to a screen that asks you to download the Dropbox program, but you don't actually need to do that right now. Just click on the Dropbox icon in the upper left to get to the web interface. On the next screen, you can just hit End Tour and then click on the face icon in the upper right hand corner to select Settings. Here, you'll need to verify your email so that you qualify for a developer key. Next, you'll need to navigate to the developer console for Dropbox by going to this URL. It's also posted in the description. Click on Create App. On this next page, you'll need to select Dropbox API, name your app something, and decide whether you want to give it full access to your Dropbox. Since I created a brand new Dropbox account for this, I chose to just give it full access. If you don't, it will create a specific folder inside a new folder called apps and the rest of your configuration may be slightly different. Click on agree to terms and press create app. Next you'll see a page with a bunch of options that you don't really need to touch. All you need to do on this page is generate an access token. Click that button and copy your token. Next, we'll head back to our Dropbox Sync add-on and put in our access token that we just got, and we'll also tell it which folder to back up to. I made a folder called Hass.io Backups for this. You can also set a keep last parameter here, which will control how many snapshots or backups will be kept locally on the SD card for your Hass.io instance. I chose to keep the last three snapshots locally. Now that we've completed our add-ons config section, we need to click the start button to activate it. It's really important to note that clicking the start button doesn't actually sync any of your backups. To do this, you actually need to make a service call. More on that in a minute. 
Hass.io has a great feature that allows us to create and name snapshots by calling a service. You'll recall that one of the most important parts about a good backup system is that they're automated. We're going to use Node-RED to handle this automation, and here's what the flow looks like. To start, we need to schedule how often we want this backup to happen. To do this, I'm using one of my favorite Node-RED custom nodes, the Light Scheduler node. I'll include that package name down in the description so you can add it using Palette Manager if you'd like. If you have some other way that you like to schedule in Node-RED, go ahead and use that. I chose once a week, specifically on Mondays, because the weekend is typically when I'm messing around with my Home Assistant setup the most. After running through a switch node that filters out only the on payload, I send it to a service call that begins a HASS.io snapshot formatted with the current date. Because making a snapshot is far from an instant process, I've added a conservative delay time of one hour from the creation of the snapshot to the firing of the service that uploads our new backup files to Dropbox. Once the service is called, your Dropbox sync add-on does its thing and uploads your new snapshot to your Dropbox. Now we have a great backup system that we never need to think about. Sort of. There's one downside to this system that I haven't been able to solve yet. On my instance of Home Assistant, each snapshot is around 300 megabytes. That means that I'll only be able to store about seven full snapshots on Dropbox before I need to go in and delete them. The Dropbox Sync add-on will delete old local copies of your snapshots if you use that keep last parameter in the configuration, but it can't actually touch the files on your Dropbox. This means every two months, you'll need to go in and manually delete the old snapshots from your Dropbox like a caveman. Let me stop you right there, Pastor Rob. Did you ever stop to question why each backup is 300 megabytes? I certainly haven't written 300 megabytes of code. In fact, all the important time-consuming parts of my Home Assistant configuration are text files. So why are my backups 300 megabytes? Examining the archived backup file revealed some interesting problems with my Home Assistant setup, and maybe with yours. Located in your config folder is a file called Home Assistant v2.db. This is your Home Assistant database file, where event and state changes are stored. How big was yours? Mine was a hulking 250 megabytes on a system that was only a few weeks old. Now, you may want this massive record of your home's events and states, but for the most part, I couldn't care less. All I want to have is a 24-hour history graph and the ability to store previous states after a reboot. To prevent your database from storing all of your home's happenings for all eternity, you need to add a few things to your configuration file. The recorder component determines which events and states get added into your database, and it also controls how long they stay there. By adding purge keep days and purge interval, we can modify how many days of information are kept in the database. Using purge interval one, my home assistant will prune my database file every one day. And by using purge keep days one, it will keep the last 24 hours of states when a purge is called. This means at any point, I'll have between 24 and 48 hours of events and states in my database. This keeps the file at a much more reasonable 10 megabytes, which is acceptable to me. The second culprit was Node-RED. If you're using the notorious BDG version of this add-on, when you take a snapshot backup, you're actually producing a backup of the install, not of your flows. Your configuration and flows for Node-RED are actually located in your share folder, which we can back up using a partial snapshot by adding the share folder to our partial snapshot configuration. If you're using Frank's version of Node-RED, your files are actually located in the config folder, which automatically get backed up when the Home Assistant folder is included in your partial snapshot configuration. In either case, you'll need to make sure that you've correctly set up a credential secret in your Node-RED configuration. This allows you to decode your flows cred file when you restore a backup. If you don't do this, you'll need to re-enter all of your credentials every time you restore from a backup. By making these few small changes, we should be able to get our snapshots down to the 15 megabyte range, which means our two gigabytes of Dropbox space should last nearly two and a half years before we need to manually delete the old backup files. Hopefully, 
we'll never have to use these files. But now we have a weekly, automatic, redundant backup that we can depend on if we need them. The process of restoring your Home Assistant is actually pretty straightforward. There's an option to restore a partial snapshot in HASS.io, but I'd actually recommend a different method. All you need to do is install a fresh copy of HASS.io on your SD card, and I'd recommend having a second SD card so you can keep your original installation intact in case you need to go back to it. Go into your HASS.io menu and install your various add-ons, including the SambaShare add-on, so you can access your files from your PC. Once you've got Samba added, go ahead and replace the contents of your new config folder with a config folder from your backup image. A .tar file can be opened just like a zip file using WinRAR. If you use Node-RED, make sure the add-on is stopped and then replace the contents of your Node-RED folder either in slash share if you're using the notorious BDG version or slash config if you're using Frank's version and then restart Home Assistant. Once your Home Assistant restarts, you should be 100% back up and working. I tried this out on my own system and I was able to go from a blank SD card to a fresh Home Assistant install with my exact same configuration in less than 90 minutes. Which seems like a decently long time until you realize that about 70 minutes of that was me just waiting for HASS.io and various add-ons to install. I know no one wants to spend their precious time messing around with a backup system, but for me, imagining the pain of reconfiguring my entire Home Assistant from scratch gives me nightmares. Hopefully, you were able to get some useful information from this video. Next week, we'll be back to building stuff. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup. Yeah.